things don't just seem to be getting worse, and in many ways they are. Weather is more extreme. Politics more crazy. Social movements beyond what we could have even imagined just a few years ago. Economic dangers, wars, and rumors of wars. Things are truly, in many ways, getting worse. And in fact, as a conversation I had with a really good friend just earlier this morning, Matthew 24, Jesus told us these would be the signs of the times. Wars, rumors of wars, etc. But the end is not yet. But along with that, it's creating this fear in certain parts of the Christian community that the focus on those circumstances is, is compelling and overwhelming. So my friend asked the question, how do we reconcile that with the fact that Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, is that just conceptual? Is it some super spiritual, just in him, we have peace and then we get heaven? Or is there a practical outflowing of that? Or as I say, is there a kingdom impact that Jesus said we would have life and life more abundantly in him? And we're not talking some faith thing where there are no challenges. That, that's just not reality. But shouldn't there be some practical outpouring, impacting, bringing the kingdom into real world that comes through our relationship with Jesus Christ? Shouldn't there be some observable, practical consequences, some impact? This is the conversation I had with a really good friend earlier. And this is my response. Now, I recognize each person, each leader has to come to a point of where they stand on the issue. Is it just that in Jesus we will have peace and eventually he'll take us to heaven? Or do we, as I do believe, that there is a faith component of seeing and expecting God to do something different that in spite of the news, not denying the news, but recognizing that in spite of the news, God can work. So as I shared with my friend, and I've shared with some of you privately before, a foundational concept for my family comes out of Exodus chapter 8. Now, similar in some perspectives to the times we live in, what was happening? God had sent Moses to break his people from the bondage and take them to their inheritance. But the process didn't look exactly like they might have expected. You know, they probably expected the all-powerful God of the universe just to free them from the bondage and carry them out smoothly and easily. But it was, and the only way I know to describe it, birth pains. It started out with a series of pestilence, of trials. Actually, the Bible calls them miracles. But, but there's a key point in Exodus chapter 8. So at that point, up until that point, there's been three plagues, miracles. But at this point, God says from this point forward, I'm making a difference between my people and everyone else. And from that point forward, the events were observable by God's people, but they, God protected them. He watched over them and they actually had no impact on them. The point for me becomes this, that there is a practical application to our faith. That the reality is we don't deny that the, the challenges will become greater. And that is not to drive fear, but rather the recognition that God is at work. That the process, the birth pains have begun. But also, how do we respond? Do we just not want to know? Do we see people who just want to believe somehow? As people have said to me, Frank, flat out, I don't want to believe that. I want to believe that it's going to get better, that something's going to happen, an election, something will change the momentum and things will be nice. They'll, they'll be easier. But the reality is that that's not what Jesus said. And he says wars, rumors, wars, pestilence, earthquakes, etc., but the end is not yet. And those that who endure to the end will be saved. But ultimately, 
do we reconcile that? How do we reconcile those challenges with Jesus literally saying he came to give us life and life abundantly? And one aspect of that is peace in the midst of the challenges. But for some, like us, and each person, the beauty of God is, Romans 14 tells us that each one of us can look at it a little bit differently. And as long as we're fully convinced in faith, then that's okay. So for some, it's just clinging tightly to Jesus, hanging on to his promise, looking for the day we get to heaven. And, and that's great. But for some, it's that expectation that God can make a difference through the trial, that God can give us more abundant life for the purpose of kingdom impact. And both answers can be right by faith. But the challenge I, I want to throw out is, that we would see more people, the more leaders who begin to recognize that in spite of the challenges, God has a greater call and He wants to work and He wants to empower us in the process.